My name is Adriano da Silva. I work with Dr. Kevin Craig. We are from Marquette University, and we are here uh, for the Mar MATLAB Simulink Student Challenge. Our design here is for a self-balanced transporter, um, which is basically uh, two wheels and a pendulum connect via two motors to the wheels. And the uh, idea here is to make the self-balance to be in a uh, uh, state, uh, steady state. So what we have here is basically what we have on the board. We have the two wheels and the two motors connect to a pendulum. If you leave the system like this, as you can see, it's an unstable system. And the idea is to make is it stable. We want to balance the system, keep it in a straight position. So we are show, going to show here how MATLAB and Simulink help us to um, to do this this design. So that's our perspective of the system with the wheels and the pendulums. From that, we develop a physical model from that physical system, where we have the wheel and the pendulum. We have an angle theta data that defines the angle of that pendulum, and which can also move on the x direction. We make some assumptions as we have here, and from those, uh, we develop a mathematical model. That mathematical model gives us the equations of motion which have uh, all the parameters that characterize that system. And some of the parameters are the inertia of the wheel, inertia of the, inertia of the wheel, inertia of the pendulum, the radius, damping, uh, and torque and mass. From those equations, then we start to use MATLAB and Simulink. On the first step, we convert those equations of motion in a uh, simulink block diagram that defines those two equations uh, in simulink. If you look at on the screen, we see on the top that block diagram represents those two equations of motion. What we have as input torque and output we have theta and x, which came from the physical model. So, this model we have theta and x, theta and x, and that's the output of those two equations. From there, we need to uh, compare, make some comparison with measurements to define the right parameters to plug to the system. And then we linearize the equations and use a uh, CISO tool, or we can also use the auto tuning to define the control of the system. In addition to that, we also use Simulink for what we call sensor fusion, which is a combination of two sensors that define the angle theta. One is accelerometer, the other is a gyro. That's for low frequency, that's for high frequency and we combine those two uh, signals via sensor fusion that you can see on the screen on the lower left corner. That's the sensor fusion that combines those two signals. Then we need to include the control loop that you can see on the screen on the top uh, right corner, which is simply a PID loop that can be tuned via uh, the auto tuning tool uh, in Simulink, or you can use the CISO tool as well. From that, we define uh, the code that goes on the system, and as you can see here, that's the actual system. What do we have here? We have a controller called Arduino. Simulink has a tool that uh, allows us to program that controller. We have PWM amplifiers that has an analog input 
where you define the torque that you need to apply to the motors. So that's the power component for this system that uh, supplies voltage and current to the motors. And then we have here on that breadboard a low pass filter. So the analog output signal from the controller is a PWM signal that uses low pass to convert from digital to analog and then supply voltage, uh, reference voltage to the amplifier. And then we have batteries uh, on the bottom to supply energy for the entire system. So this system here, if you don't apply uh, system, is like the other one, it's unstable. When you turn it on, we wait for the sensors to stabilize, and then you see that it can be, uh, it's a stable system, it stays in steady state. Even if you cause some disturbance, it can recover for itself. We don't have encoders here, which would allow us to make uh, position and steering, but it's still stable because it can keep it in steady state. We have this additional pendulum here that can add some additional disturbance to the system. If you take that brake off, and if it cause additional disturbance, we can also see that the system recovers from that. So and that's how MATLAB and Simulink help us to develop the system that we did very quickly in about one or two days. Okay, cut.